The bomb, a fact of life, a symbol of mass death. It is the object of mass protest in the West and competition between East and West. It is always there, as it was in the background of President Reagan's speech today and the UN forum where he delivered it. Tonight, Terry Drinkwater takes a look back to the birth of the bomb, a product of 20th century civilization and a threat to it that began at a sleepy little railroad siding in New Mexico. If you come to New Mexico looking for the landmarks of the nuclear age, the places where man first began unlocking the frightening secrets of the atom. The first stop is here, the depot at Laney. Took the train from Chicago and came, came to Laney. I was transferred out to Project Y. Fine. Where in the hell is Project Y, you know? We didn't know. Dick Watts would find out soon enough, he and thousands of others, the best and the brightest of America's young scientists, sent to Project Y during World War II to build the atomic bomb. From Lamy, they were brought to these beautiful but desolate mountains, created by one of nature's mightiest forces, a huge volcano. Brought to the place that would be called the City of Fire, Los Alamos. When you came here, you were forbidden to tell anyone, including your curious relatives, where you were, we were isolated from, from the world very effectively. Norris Bradbury and the others, isolated at what had been a boys' school, converted to a huge laboratory because of fears that Nazi Germany was working on the bomb. The United States had to get it first. Scientific giants like Oppenheimer, Teller, Fermi, working with young GIs like Jay Wexler. The quicker we could do something with it, the quicker the war was going to be over. That was my personal feeling, uh, that I couldn't imagine that if we used uh, this thing that uh, the war could last. Come now to where the bomb was born, and you will see how little has changed. There's the stone building where ice was stored before the coming of the scientists. They handled uranium inside, fire and ice. There's the rickety bridge over the Rio Grande that took them down the hill past the ancient city of Santa Fe, where America's real natives have watched the white man come and go for centuries. Down through the heartland of New Mexico, past the farms and the crossroad towns, to a lonely spot where only the antelope roam. It was here, 200 miles from Los Alamos, that they brought the bomb's components, brought them to the ranch house where Dave McDonald's family had lived for years. In there, on a table covered with plain wrapping paper, they assembled the core of the bomb, the plutonium, slightly warm to the touch. They took it a few miles away and put it on a tower a hundred feet up. And on Monday, July 16th, 1945, at 29 minutes and 45 seconds past 5 a.m. Mountain War Time, the clocks in all the bunkers ticked down to zero. Weeks later, the bomb would be dropped on Japan, and the war would end. But all that Monday, in tiny towns across New Mexico, they talked about how the sun had risen and gone back down. Some carried the vision of that new dawn with them to the end. Others, among the living, are still troubled by the sight. If you, once you see where it goes off, you, you'll be afraid of it too. That's something that should never be allowed anymore. Was it a good thing to have happened for mankind? Well, the... Who knows? I, I, I really... You have to make decisions on the basis of what you know at the time. At the time, it was a darn good thing to do. People forget this. They think if we hadn't done it, nobody else would have done it. I think that's wishful thinking. Uh, the energy was there for the asking, for the taking. I think the majority of us uh, really had doubts that uh, other nations would, would sink the, the resources into such an operation to try to develop it. But they did. But they did. At Ground Zero, there is a stark monument. A general has had his name inscribed on it. 
The ground is still dotted with pebbles of glass, fused from sand by the terrible heat. Slightly radioactive 37 years later. Otherwise, so little has changed. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, White Sands, New Mexico.